guys, oh man, I am so tired today and I have to tell you I'm a little bummed. I, you know, you know that I've committed to this 5K. We've been talking about commitment every week this month and I've been trying to get out every day and do my walking and staying hydrated and wearing my headband, all those things, but you know what? I messed it today. I just didn't do it. And you know what? When you commit to something and you make a plan to do something, you're not gonna do it perfectly, but you gotta stick to it. So I missed my walk today, so guess what I'm doing tomorrow? I'm getting up early and I'm gonna walk because it's important important when you make a commitment to continue to practice it, to put it into practice. And when you mess up, just get up and go ahead and keep on going on. Well, our elementary kids, that's all of you, we've been talking about not just committing to like training for sports or training to learn an instrument or anything like that. We're talking about what it means to follow Jesus. We've said that we do, we know that we believe him, we love him, but there's more to it than that. We talked about what it means for us to listen to God and to hear from him and follow his instructions. We learned last week about praying, about what it meant to pray, but also how to do it and to put that into practice. And today we're in the book of Matthew, we're going to learn from Peter, and he had the opportunity to talk about God. He got to tell people that Jesus is the Messiah. And we have the opportunity, and we're supposed to, part of our commitment is to tell people about Jesus. And so get in there, watch the lesson, and I hope that you'll be able to commit to that this week and put it into practice.
everyone, I'm Erica. And all month long, we've been talking about commitment. Commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. So I've been training for a 5K race, and guess what? It's only a week away. So I'm a little nervous about it. You see, I haven't told anybody this. This will be my first 5K ever. My friends convinced me that I would enjoy running a 5K. They've been running for years, so I figure they know what they're talking about. We're actually meeting up tomorrow to have a kind of pre-race get-together. I have so many questions to ask them. How long does it take to run a 5K? Will my legs hurt when the race is over? What exactly are we running from? So that should be fun. Or, what if they get tired of all my questions? What if they ask me questions? Will they expect me to know as much as they do? I need to practice what I'll say. So, Erica, what's your favorite part about running? Um, the running part? How many marathons have you run this year? This year? Uh, none. If you were running on a track headed west at 12 miles per hour and a train 127 miles away was traveling from the opposite direction at 84 miles per hour, at what part of the track would you and the train meet? Hmm, I don't know. You don't know? forward to this at all. Maybe it'll be easier if I just stand against the wall somewhere and don't say anything. Hopefully today's story will help. It's about saying what's on your mind, even when you don't have all the answers. See you soon. <laughs>Peter stared at the high hills ahead, one of which was home to a deep cavern said to be the birthplace of a Greek god. Philippi was filled with monuments and temples to other fake gods. Peter? What? Oh. Peter looked around. Jesus and his other friends had stopped under a shady tree. Peter, James, and John stepped off the road to join them. Water break. As his disciples rested, Jesus turned and faced them. Perhaps he knew that here, near Philippi, where so many people believed in false gods, it was important that his disciples knew and spoke the truth. Who do people say the Son of Man is? Jesus' friends understood that when he said Son of Man, he meant himself. Some people say that you're John the Baptist. What people? Hello, John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. So that's what they say, just saying. Well, some people say you're Elijah or Jeremiah. Yeah, or one of the prophets. People had been comparing Jesus to many important figures in Jewish history. Men who called the nation to repent. Men who did miracles. Men who spoke the word of God. But Jesus was so much more than that. What about you? Who do you say that I am? As Jesus looked squarely at his disciples, they fidgeted. They had seen Jesus feed thousands of people from one boy's lunch. They'd seen him heal countless sick people. They'd seen him command evil spirits to leave. They knew Jesus was special. But it's one thing to think something and another to say it. Peter, as usual, was the one to take the leap. You are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. Jesus smiled. Blessed are you, Simon. No mere human showed this to you. My Father in heaven showed it to you. Here's what I tell you. You are Peter. Jesus was giving Simon a new identity. Peter means stone. 
something strong and sturdy. Jesus continued, On this rock I will build my church. The gates of hell will not be strong enough to destroy it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What you lock on earth will be locked in heaven. What you unlock on earth will be unlocked in heaven. The disciples were amazed. Teachers, pet. Hey, we were all thinking it. And I don't know, the whole locking and unlocking thing sounds like a really big responsibility. Jesus knew there were things that would take his friends a while to understand. So he told them. Do not tell anyone yet that I am the Messiah. Okay. Yes, sir. Got you. Peter had the courage to speak what he knew to be true. And when the time was right, he would share it with everyone he met. Hmm. So Peter and the other disciples had a lot of questions. People had been wondering for months, years even, who Jesus really was. But it was important for the disciples not to just wonder about, but to talk about it. So Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? Even though they all had thoughts about who Jesus was, Peter was the only one who had the courage to say what he was thinking out loud. Sometimes it can be scary to talk about what you believe about God with other people. What if you have questions? What if people ask you questions? What if there's something you don't know? Well, I've got some good news for you. No one you talk to has all the answers. A lot of people even have the same questions you do. That's why it's important to practice talking about God. Sometimes it helps to say something out loud to really know what you believe. And sometimes you can learn something new from someone else. So don't be afraid to get a conversation started. You got a few minutes? I have some questions. Me too. I'm glad I'm not the only one. So when you're excited about something God has done for you in your life, share it with someone out loud. And when you aren't sure about something, Ask your small group leader or someone you know who follows Jesus for wisdom. Together, we can help each other understand what God has done in the past and what he's doing in our lives right now. Here's the one thing to remember today. Practice talking about God. If you have questions, ask. And if you don't know something, say so. And if you think you know an answer, have the courage to say what you're thinking out loud. So, what do you want to talk about? What I always want to talk about. Stuff. Oh, uh, I get it. Because you're a stuffed animal? Yeah, get it? Because I'm made out of stuff. <laughs> okay, I'll go back in my corner.